you just started making methods and you're probably looking at return statements. And if you're anything like me, you're probably confused as hell. But I'm gonna show you exactly how to use return statements in Java. And by the end of this video, if you watch all the way through, you'll have a fully working program using methods with return statements and it's gonna be great. Hey, what's up? It's Alex back again, helping you learn Java. On this channel, I make Java tutorials for beginners every single week. So if you're new here, that's something you're into, then consider subscribing. The very first thing we'll do is hop into Eclipse. We'll click on File, New Java Project. We'll call it something like Return Statements. Hit OK. Next, go into your newly created project. Right click on the source folder and go to New Class. This is our Java file. We'll just name it something like Return Statements again. Click this first check mark and hit finish. You're all set up to start working. A return statement happens inside of a method. So I'm just going to make a method real quick. As an overview, we have this class called return statements. A class is another name for a Java file and it'll have a bunch of these methods inside these curly braces. It already gave us one method and that's called the main method. This code gets run once you click the run button. To make our own method, we'll just copy this little template for now. We'll say public static void. We'll name it something like uh, print a message like that. And we'll do our open and close parentheses and then curly braces. And just like how when the main method gets run with the green run button, this code inside the curly braces gets run. We want to put some code inside of our customized method and we'll just do that. Uh, we'll print out something like um, this is our first method. Okay, save that and run it. We see nothing gets printed out because only what's in the main method gets run. So we can call our print a message by just typing it. Since it lives in the file, we can refer to it by this name, print a message. So I'll just type that, print a message, and then the parentheses, semicolon, save it, run it, and we get that code. Because when we click run, we go in here, and then we go here, and then we see that this is this, and this has this code. Now onto return statements. Let's make another method called add. Let's add some numbers. So we'll just do what we did before, these words. We're not, I haven't really gone over too much about what these keywords are, but we'll just keep moving on. We'll call it add. And we wanted to add two numbers. So we can pass two numbers into our method by putting them in these parentheses. Say we wanna add some integers, we can just do int a, and say int b. We can, of course, print out the result, a plus b, save it, and then call that method with a few numbers in here. We'll say like five and four. This is how you would call a method you wrote with two parameters. Save it and run it, and you get nine printed out. But what if we want to store that value into another integer, say sum? We can't really do that. Um, if we wanted to say like um, int sum equals the results of adding five and four, you can't do that. But now come return statements. Return statements let you run a method and then bring the results of that method into a variable you want. And that's why we have these red underlines because we haven't set up return statements yet. This third keyword, public static void, this keyword can change and it's actually the type that the method will bring back to you. This void just means nothing. It means once you call the method, it runs the code and that's it. It goes to the next line. It doesn't store anything into this code. So when we try to assign our integer sum equals add five and four, it's saying, well, what the heck? This is void, this is nothing, I can't use this. So to use return statements in Java, if we want to compute a plus b and then have the results of a plus b 
stored back into the method call itself, we would replace void with the type that we want. So it can be int, have some red underlines. This says add a return statement. You, you could just click this like this, or you know, you could just type it yourself. Um, I'm gonna modify it a little bit. We'll return a plus b. And now our red underline up here went away. I'm gonna print out the sum and then I'll go over everything step by step so that you don't miss anything and you fully understand what's going on. We click the green run button, we go into our main method. The first thing is print a message. Since this method, print a message, is in our Java file, we know what it does. And it does this code between the curly braces. So that's what gets run first. Next, we go to the next line and we say we want to declare an integer variable and call it sum and set that equal to the result of another method we called add, which adds two numbers together. So we go to add right here, we pass five into A and four into B. Now we run this code and we hit the return statement. Before we do anything with the return statement, we need to look at the code after it, A plus B. So we do five plus four, and we have nine right here, return nine. This takes nine and puts it back into the original method call. This now is the exact same thing as nine to the computer. If this was eight, we'd return five plus eight, and this would be 13. And since now we're returning 13, and this third keyword lets it know what type the return is, it's an integer, since this is an integer 13 and this is an integer, we can now set sum equal to the result of add, which again is the integer 13 brought back by the return statement. And lastly, we're printing out that sum. We'll save it and run it, and you'll see the first method, and then we're printing out 13. So now we know two return types. We can return nothing and just run this code with void or we can do something and return a variable, say the type of the variable, and do it that way. Now let's do another return statement example in Java by making another method and saying um, to capitalize some word or sentence. So we'll make another one, public, static. And then the third one is the type, and this is going to be of type string, since we're working with words. So we type string here. And I'll name it like caps and then do our curly braces. Right now there's a red underline because it says this method must return a result of type string. So we can click add return statement or you could just type return and then something like an empty string for now. I'm gonna delete these other methods here and just start fresh. Let's use our caps method by doing string We'll say um, shouting, cause it's like, you're shouting. Why are you typing in all caps to me? Are you mad at me? And we'll set it equal to caps. We'll call our caps method through here. But if you notice, we're not really doing anything, but let's pass in a string and then convert all those to uppercase like it's supposed to. So we can pass a string parameter. We'll just call it S and then we can do things to strings. So I'll just type S and then a dot. Since it knows that S is of type string, this dot will let us see all the things we can do to the string. And luckily for us, there's one called to uppercase, which converts it to uppercase. Now this is red underlined because we have to put a string in here now to match this method. Why are you? Something like that. And we'll just print out shouting. Okay, save it and run it. And you see all of it converted to uppercase. I'll walk through the return statement here again. We click the green run button. We go into our main method. The first line here we're going to run. It looks like we want to make a string variable called shouting and we'll set it equal to this. This happens to be the name of a method we wrote. So we go into that method and set the string s 
equal to this. Why are you reading my diary, mom? We hit the return statement. We take, why are you reading my diary, mom? And convert it to uppercase using a string method. If you want to learn more about string methods, I have it on the screen now. You can check that out. But after we convert it to uppercase, we return the uppercase string back here. And now it's stored into shouting. Last, we do a final check. This shouting is a string and our method returns type string. So they both match, so that's good, there's no errors. Finally, we print it out, and there it is. Lastly, I'm gonna do one more where we return an array of integers. And this sounds crazy, like what the hell? Ah. But it's literally the exact same thing we've been doing. So um, let's make a method that turns integers into an array of integers. So we'll say public static, we want to return an array of integers. And you can do that by doing int and then the two square brackets. This is the type that's gonna be returned. Next, I'll just call it uh, give me array from ints. And we'll pass in like, um, like three integers. We'll say int a, int b, and int c. Do our curly braces to see what kind of code we're gonna put in here. Of course, we get this red underline because it says we need a return statement that matches this type, integer array. I'm gonna hold off for now. We'll just quickly declare an integer array. We'll call it array equals new int, square brackets, and then the size is gonna be three integers long since we have a, b, and c, that's three. The first integer in the array is going to be a, so we'll go to the first element in the array, which is zero. It's tricky, you always start at zero, not one. So to do that, we go into our integer array called array at the very beginning at zero, and we set that equal to a. Next, we go into the second position, one, and set that equal to b, and finally, oh, that should be just one array, since we named it array. We'll go into the last position, position two, which is actually number three. And we'll say that's equal to C. And finally, finally, we can use a return statement, return to return something of type integer array. And it looks like we have one here, array. Boom, we are done. Now all we have to do is use it. We'll say um, an integer array up here called awesome array equals, then we'll call our method, give me array from ints. We'll pass three numbers here. I'll say three, seven, one. This'll get run. It'll return our array of integers back into this code, and then that'll get stored into awesome array. Finally, we'll just print out um, some values of awesome array. So we'll go the get the first one, copy and paste here, and we'll get a position one and two as well. Save it and run it. And you see each value of the array is returned to us through this method. So to sum up, a return statement lets you call a method and then store a value into that call. And from that value, you can store it into things like strings, integers, integer arrays, or you could not do anything with it at all. And that's what's called void. All the code will be down below. If you have questions, please ask in the comments. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here watching this video with me, learning how to code, and I appreciate that so much. I'll catch you in the next video.